Hey everyone, my name is Michael, and today we'll be covering these four different career paths in commercial real estate. For those of you who don't know, I actually graduated from Cornell University with a concentration in finance, accounting, and real estate, and I also have my US state and federal real estate license, which I obtained while working for a commercial real estate firm back home in Hawaii. All right, let's get started. First, we have the real estate brokerage career path. When most people think about a career in real estate, they usually think about real estate brokers. These are the folks who help facilitate transactions or basically help people or companies buy or sell real estate. The brokerage space is pretty interesting and can be quite lucrative, but beginners should note that there are actually a whole string of other real estate careers, some of which don't even require a real estate license. We'll cover more of those later in this video. All right, so there are two main divisions within real estate, and that's typically residential real estate and commercial real estate. Most people are pretty familiar with residential real estate as it covers your typical family apartments, flats, and houses that people live in. Commercial real estate, on the other hand, typically covers much larger, much more expensive properties. So think your office buildings, warehouses, shopping malls, and hotels. In terms of work tasks, brokers would typically do things like show prospective buyers the property, draft contracts, assist with inspections, and basically anything else to help facilitate the transaction. For notable companies, you have the residential side with Coldwell Banker and Remax, and then you have the commercial real estate side with players like CBRE and JLL. You should also note that a lot of these big players like CBRE and JLL have internal sub teams or subsidiaries that also cover residential real estate. First, the answer is yes, you will need a real estate license to work as a broker in the US and many other countries. For pay, brokers are paid a per deal commission or what's known as eat what you kill. This makes it really hard to provide a pay estimate as it can range anywhere from 35,000 a year to 1 million plus a year. With that said, first year brokers should really expect to be on the lower end of that pay range as it usually takes quite a bit of time to develop a network of clients. Similarly for work hours, it'll be completely up to you to determine how much you wanna work and when you wanna work. As a rough guide, we'll estimate work hours to be around 40 to 50 hours per week. All right, now let's cover real estate development. Real estate developers usually acquire land or old properties to construct new buildings or make significant renovations to old properties. These types of operations can be extremely profitable, but also extremely risky as the process is really complex and a lot can go wrong when building an entire property from scratch. Now, a real estate development company will likely have a whole string of different roles, but perhaps the most notable and relevant would be the project manager role. Project managers at real estate development companies oversee the full construction and development process, which means they'll manage design teams, construction teams, materials purchasing, inspections, and a handful of other obligations. A finance background here would be helpful, but really any general real estate or management experience could help you break into this kind of role. Notable real estate development companies in the US include Trammell Crow, Related, The Irvine Company, and Graystar Real Estate. Real estate developers usually don't need a real estate license if they hire a broker to handle the transactions process. Compensation will also vary widely depending on the size and performance of the real estate projects that you're involved in. So overall, you can expect to be paid around 80K to 200K plus per year. Various real estate projects can also be quite stressful as a real estate project manager will usually have to be on call whenever something goes wrong. So you can expect to work between 50 to 80 hours per week. All right, now let's cover real estate lending. If you work in residential real estate, you'll know that many families take out a loan to purchase a home with what's known as a mortgage. Similarly, on the commercial real estate side, private equity companies will take out a loan to purchase a commercial investment property. Now the people who figure out who to loan money to, what interest rate to provide, and other loan terms are known as loan originators or loan underwriters, and these are the people who work in real estate lending. These loan underwriters need to have a strong background in finance, especially on the commercial real estate side, as we'll often build financial models to create loans that are profitable and adjusted for different risk profiles. Notable real estate lending companies include the big banks like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, as well as some of the general big real estate players like Cushman and Wakefield. Now for the quick career stats. First, nope, you won't need a real estate license to work on commercial real estate loan underwriting. 
Pay for junior level employees can vary quite a lot depending on the value of the properties that your company makes loans for. But in general, the range can start as low as 50K per year and can climb upwards closer to 200K plus per year for more experienced hires. In terms of work hours, commercial real estate loan underwriters will work between 50 to 60 hours per week. All right, now let's cover real estate private equity. Real estate private equity firms work to raise money to invest in commercial real estate projects with a plan to obtain a high financial return. They do this by first conducting market research to identify undervalued properties, and then they go ahead and set up the investment deals by gathering loans and equity investment partners, and then they'll go ahead and purchase the property and maybe fix it up a bit, then collect rent as they own it, and then hope to sell it at a higher price sometime in the future. Most real estate private equity firms will have an acquisitions team and an asset management team. The acquisitions team will be in charge of sourcing and buying the properties, and then the asset management team will be in charge of maximizing the rental revenue, reducing operating expenses, and really anything else that they can do to optimize the investment before the property is sold. In terms of work tasks, analysts at real estate private equity firms will often maintain real estate financial models, and they'll try to stay up to date with the latest market research on valuations and leasing rates. Notable companies in real estate private equity include Blackstone, Brookfield, Angelo Gordon, and Starwood. Now let's get into the quick career stats. A real estate private equity analyst won't need a real estate license, but will likely need some general background experience in real estate, finance, or accounting. Analyst pay can vary a lot by firm, but generally they're paid quite well, as entry-level employees can make around 70 k per year, and more experienced hires can make upwards of 250 k plus per year. And a lot like other traditional finance roles, work hours can be quite intense at around 60 to 70 hours per week. All right, so that's our video on the beginner's career guide to real estate. Please note that we've only covered some of the common career paths here, and we will acknowledge that we've left out some others like real estate investment banking, real estate appraisals, and more. If you're interested in more career breakdown videos, consider checking out this video here. And as always, if you found this video useful, please give us a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.